Okay, I wanted to do a basic fault finding uh, video so that if your metal detector packs up, you can quite cheaply diagnose it yourself and hopefully get, get yourself up and running without having to go to the trouble of having to find a repair technician if indeed you can actually find someone. One of my subscribers mentioned a little while back that they had a problem with their metal detector and they couldn't find anyone to repair it and that got me thinking that I need to post up some very basic tests and things that people can do because quite often it's very simple stuff and you can repair it and get it going yourself and if you've got no repair technician near you then your metal detector is out of service and that's not good so anyway I'm going to cover a few simple tests that you can do and to kit yourself up to be able to do these all you need is a digital multimeter now there's two types I've got on the table here let me get rid of these leads I've got this one, which is the first one that I ever started with, which is a new tool DM10 digital multimeter. Cost me about five UK pounds, which is about seven dollars US. And you don't need anything more complicated than this to get you started. Unfortunately, my leads are broken on this, so I'll be using this one. This one is a Precision Gold, and this is a model PG017. Practically the same amount of features as this one. It's just a slightly more expensive one. This was about 20 or 25 UK pounds, so about 35, possibly 40 dollars, if that. So we'll be using this one for today's test. I'm going to break down the fault finding into several categories, which I'll just flash up on the screen now. And alongside each of the categories, I've actually put the time on the video that you can just move the little slider to if you've got a specific problem, and I've actually covered this in the video. So let's get started, and uh, we'll look at section one. So section one just covers the settings that you want to put the, the multimeter onto when you start. Now you see you've got DC and AC here as a switch. And on this one, you've got DCV here and AC and DCA. The one you always want is DC volts for the, for the initial test that I'm going to show you. And you also will be using the ohms function, which is this little symbol here, which I'll flash up on the screen in the top left. That's the ohms function. And that is resistance. And that's for when you're checking for broken wires, um, or whether you've actually got a connection. The DC volts reading, so you've got DC switch here with V here, this is when you're actually taking a reading of voltage that is present. Now most metal detectors are DC, they're not AC, so you have to make sure you've got it in the right setting. So, let's head on to section two and see what we need to do. So one of the first things that um, can go wrong is your batteries. Now, if you're using standard throwaway batteries like this, you can just replace the batteries and see whether it gets you out of trouble. But if you've found some batteries in the cupboard or you, you've got some in your bag and you're not really sure if they're any good, you can actually test these batteries before you put them in. Or likewise, if you've got some in there, you can take them out and test them to see whether one of them or two of them are causing you the problem. You know, maybe you brought a new set, you found an old battery, you put that in, that might be your problem. And it's very easy to test the voltage in a battery. So the first thing you do is you look on the side of the battery, and it says here 1.5 volt. So on your multimeter setting here, in voltage, I've got a 2 volt setting. So I would smooth the needle round to the 2 volt and I'm on DC because batteries are always DC we turn it on now on the battery you've got a plus this end so that's where the red probe goes your red probe is always plus your black probe is always negative so now we know which end is the plus we just connect the plus probe onto the point sticking out on the top of the battery like so and we connect the black probe to the bottom and you can see on the meter we've got 1.66 volts on a 1.5 volt battery 
So that battery, if you get about 1.6, 1.65 volts on a 1.5, this is a double A battery. That's a brand new battery that's never been put into anything. So that is perfect. So let's do the test on this battery here. Now I found this in the cupboard, so I could put, in theory, put this in my metal detector with the rest of our batteries and start using it. So that's interesting. So we're getting 0.45 of a volt. So just half a volt. So that battery is completely flat and needs to go in the bin. So the first test that we've done is we found out good battery, bad battery, bin. So if you have some problems and you take your batteries out, you can check them to make sure, or even if you put brand new ones, that you haven't got a dud battery in the pack. That would be the first thing that you will check. Now some of you out there will be using rechargeable batteries. You can check those in the same way as what I've just shown you in the previous section. But some of you will have battery packs that you charge up and put in your metal detector. And they're a rechargeable pack like this. This is actually uh, a pack off of my drill because I don't my electric drill. Um, this is the battery for it or the battery pack because I don't actually have a metal detector that uses a battery pack. But the, the same principle applies to this. So this you can see has got 18 volt on it. So we're going back to the meter now. We were previously set on two. Well, 18 volts is more. The next one up is 20. So if we go on to the 20 volt range and this is 18 volts, it should read it no problem at all. So, looking on here, I'm not sure whether this is going to come out on camera, I can notice a plus there and a minus there. So it means the terminal this side is plus, and if you remember plus is a red lead, and the minus sign is our black lead. So I'm going to connect these up, We'll see what sort of reading we get on this. And as you can see, we've got 18.42 volts. Now, this is an 18 volt battery. So, in theory, that's pretty well charged. So, I wouldn't worry too much about that. That looks quite good. I could put that in my drill and I could use it. So you get the theory on that, so now we've eliminated the batteries there. So if your metal detector's not turning on, we've checked out the individual batteries, and we've now checked out the battery pack. So, let's go on to the next section and see what else could be causing our metal detectors not to turn on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is, so you've got one of these battery packs, you've put it in your charger, plugged it in the wall, charged it up, Put in your metal detector, your metal detector's not working. You pull the battery out, the battery's flat. Right, you think, I need a new battery. But before you go online and order one, the next thing you do is you check your actual battery charger to make sure that is actually putting out the voltage that you need before you buy a new battery. And then later on, discover it's actually your charger that's up to shoot. So on the back of this device here, it says output DC 4.2 volts. So we'll leave it on the 20 volt range because obviously it's telling us it's 4.2 volts output. Okay, and then down here we have two pins in the charger. We have a positive one on the right, a plus, so that's where my red lead's going, and another one, a negative one on the left. So if we probe on there, we get 4.22 volts. Now the output of the charger, it said, was DC 4.2 volts. So that charger is actually working. So if we had a problem where the battery was flat and it wasn't turning the metal detector on, and we confirmed that by the previous test, we've now just checked that the charger is working, so you would in theory need a new battery. And you can definitely confirm that's going to cause your problem by doing those two simple checks. Okay, so let's still stick in with the charger. Suppose you chug your ch plug your charger in the wall and it doesn't turn on and the little light doesn't come on and it's it's not working. So you think, oh no, my charger's broken. So let's spend a bit of time looking at the charger itself. Now, 
I don't know what the electrics are like abroad, I can only account for UK ones. But in UK we have a 3 pin 240 volt system. And in each of these plugs there is a fuse. So if this fuse blows the power will not go down the power lead all the way to the charger. So if your charger doesn't come on it can be as simple as a blown fuse. So let's test the fuse. Let's get the thing out and we'll see whether that fuse is working or not working. And testing a fuse is quite a simple thing to do. So, within a fuse, you have a metal cap this end, a metal cap this end, and you have a wire that runs between each of those terminals. Now, if that gets shorted or something's wrong in the system, it blows the wire and you have no connection between these. So the current flows that way. Or the other way, depending on which way around it is. So to test a fuse, you go onto a different setting on here go on to what's called resistance. Now if you've got no connection between that cap and that cap, i.e. the fuse wire inside there is blown, it will remain showing OL on there. If you've got a connection you'll either get a reading or it'll go to 0 0.00 and that's the way you can tell whether you've got a blown fuse. So let's just probe onto here. There you are straight to 0, 0.00. That means we've got contact between there and this pin here. So that fuse is good. So if your battery charger didn't come on then we will go on to stage two. So let me just put... Okay so we're going to check this lead. Now <clears throat> this lead has got two holes here so that means that there's two wires running down the inside of here. So on a UK plug, this wire and this wire are going to run down to the end of here and plug into the battery charger. This wire is just an earth and there's no wire connected to that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if there's what's called continuity. Now continuity means that if you're touching the end of the wire here, there's no breaks in the end of the wire all the way from the plug to the lead here. If so, if there's a break in there, you'll have power at the plug, your fuse won't be blown, but it won't run all the way down here and then go into your charger. And that's another useful test you can do. So all you do is you push your probe down one of these, put it on resistance on about 20K, and you touch on, and you get nothing. So obviously I'm not going far enough down there. So what I've got is a piece of wire to push right down there to make a connection. And then touch that on there. And then if I probe on we should get a reading if there's anything there. Yeah, there you go. So we've got a reading. You can see that goes to 0, 0.00. So the left hand one of this one here is connected to the right hand pin. So if we now probe down the right hand one and we connect to the left pin, we should also get a reading. Which we do. So what it's basically saying is the wire running from there all the way down to the end of there has got no breaks in it at all. So that's good. So we've got good continuity all the way down that lead. So that lead will supply power to your charger. Now let me show you a bit of a better demonstration of what I mean by continuity. So here's a length of wire. Okay. And there's the meter. Now if you've got continuity it means the two probes are joined. So if you touch the two probes together like so you can see you get 0, 0.0 on the meter. The probes are touching, so there's a flow from this one to this one. They're connected. If you touch them on the ends of a piece of wire, like so, then you can see I've got a resistance reading there, 0 0.1, 0 0.00. So there's resistance from there to there. The two are connected. Now what happens when you get a broken wire? Okay, so by continuity, 
if we probe on the end of this piece of wire here, and we probe on the end of this piece of wire here, I'll get the meter in shot. Um, because it's got a break in the middle and it's not joined, we get 0.L. There is no way on earth that if we're touching on this end and this end, we're going to get a reading because we've got the break in the middle. And that break in the middle of that wire is exactly what you're looking for to determine that you haven't got a break in this cable because if you have, you may have the fuse working, you plug it in, even a little light may come on here, but it won't then flow all the way down here and go to your charger. So the light on your charger will not come on. And it can be as simple as, it's not a broken charger, you've just got a break in this wire, so there's no way the unit's getting power.